Hi everyone, I'm Sam with Rising Tide and I handle a lot of our Hoodoo implementation and documentation. Now today though, I'm gonna talk about an additional script that I've found. So this is Luke Whitelocks and this is gonna be building a table of contents. So it will take your folder organization and build out a master document that will hyperlink to those specific sections. So we'll hop in super quick, show you exactly how to do it. And if you wanna make any modifications, I make some changes and also just how I deploy these scripts in general. So let's take a look. So this link will be posted below and we'll do a quick walkthrough of what we're doing here, but I'm going to the GitHub link to get the most recent version. And then what I did was I created a new document in VS Code here. I'm gonna make a couple changes to this because I find it easier to set it up this way and also know that the API keys that I use in my videos are always deleted immediately after just because I'm exposing those. But I'm gonna start off by doing a couple things. One of those is going to be getting rid of the original vault name, the API key and base domain here. The reason that I'm doing that is I'm going to be installing the API module directly into my terminal, which I have down below. So that will actually prompt me for these items that we have here. When I do that manually, I can actually skip this step. And I'm also going to make sure that my key is scoped to only post. So I won't have access to passwords, won't have access to deletion. I'm only gonna make my API key to post for the sake of this. And then I'm going to get rid of that key. This is how I create my API keys. So I'm gonna go into my admin tab, down to my API keys, and I'm just gonna hit new. I'm gonna call this TOC and I'm going to date it just because I like to know how long my keys have been existing or sitting around. Because I'm recording and showing these keys to you directly, I normally just take these down immediately. But I like to add a date. It maintains consistency and makes sure that I don't have keys sitting around that are active, that are over a month old or much longer. The next though are these additional configurations. I don't really need to scope this to a specific company, nor do I need this for the magic dash. So same with these other settings, I don't need to access passwords or anything else. So I'm not gonna add those permissions. And then after I hit create new key, Hoodoo will give me that new form. So I have that right here and we can copy that and use this directly with our script. With that key, I'm gonna come back over here. We have this little section that would have been brought in if I had that Azure Vault set up, but I don't. So instead what I'm gonna do is just remove these two functions here. And then I also have my import module. So I'm gonna actually just cut this out and then I can paste it on the bottom to make sure that I have the import function. And like most things, I like to test to make sure that my API key works. So let's get our new Hoodoo base URL. Now our new Hoodoo API key. And then I have that key copied to my clipboard. Oh, sorry, I have my other item copied to my clipboard. Go back here quick, grab my key, and then I'll paste this back into my terminal. Get my companies real quick. And great, we can see that that works. So I'm gonna clear this terminal out to move on to the next part. So I've removed the extra fluff that I don't need. And the other part is going to be how we're importing those articles. So this works both for the global KB and also for companies. For sake of the example, I've only created companies or sorry, KB articles in my global section for this. So I have multiple articles here, additional folders so that we can see how layer folders work with the script but I don't need the rest of it and I don't want blank articles appearing in companies that don't use this. So I'm gonna go into the script and make a little bit of a change. Here I can see that this section is saying generate it for each company. So thank you for clear documentation on this. Because I'm not using this, I'm gonna to look to see where this bracket ends. So I'm not removing a function that the rest of the script might use. Now we can delete all of this, but I'm just gonna comment it out just for sake of being safe and in case I wanna undo this at any point. I can just control slash and bring that back in. But with this all set, all I really need to do now is run the script. So I'm gonna roll a five and it looks like we have a couple things come through. Let's see what that was. Oh, this is just our printout. In that case, I'm gonna go back to my global knowledge base, refresh this page, and then here we go, our table of contents. This will let me to hyperlink to those specific sections. So if I have guidelines for whatever else, I can have a very in-depth article, but also know where it's located. The biggest benefit is having a centralized table of contents. So this is a great script that I recommend just because it shows a top level of all of your articles, 
subfolders and where you need to go. This is also incredibly helpful on the company level. I just didn't have any examples and I didn't want to populate my instance with a bunch of empty table of contents articles. I also see lots of people using the company portal for sharing articles and other resources. I will let you know that if we generate a table of contents for the company level, that we can't actually use that article for the portal. The reason for that is that the external portal is going to use a different article link than the actual content itself. So I'm going to just configure folder and if I want to add it, we have these global ones here. I can't actually add a KB article without a folder. So let's just say I will create a quick one and kind of show you what this would look like on the client side. All right, so I just added my article to the API folder we can see up here. So if I go back over to my Acme Corp, I'm just gonna refresh this a little bit. I have my API. I'm gonna add this to my portal and hypothetically, this would show me two linked articles in a great organization. But again, just because they're different links, while these are still active, if I actually jump to them, see how it takes me directly back into my internal instance and not how it would look within the user side. So just a quick little caveat on that part of it. So that about wraps it up. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us or comment down below. I'm always happy to chat. Thank you, everyone.